Do you want to see Jesus' words come alive right before your eyes? You are about to see something that was just revealed to me this morning that has absolutely stunned me. And I am going to share this with you next. So what does this have to do with the Hebrew letter Gimel? I have been talking to you about those insane bills that the ultra-Orthodox Jews in Israel have wanted to pass, not only against the women at the Western Wall, but most recently the bill that they've been trying over and over apparently to pass that bill that bans Jesus being preached anywhere in Israel and uh, banning the gospel message, banning Jesus off uh, any testimony off of the internet, out of your emails, in private conversations. I don't know how they propose that they would do that, but I have something that happened this morning that the Lord was showing me that just blows me away, people. Okay, this is really going to blow your mind because you're going to feel the chill of the Holy Spirit going through you when I tell you this. Okay, it's the United Torah Judaism, the Heretic Group, and they are the ones that are putting these draconian bills forward in the Knesset. Now, so far, they've been prevented from passing these bills, but I told you definitely that they are going to put a king on their throne to establish the Davidic dynasty again. And now what I'm seeing with this is, I was telling you in my last video that I realized that the covenant with many could very well be, because a covenant is usually involving a blood covenant, and because the seven-year time of Jacob's trouble has in the middle of it the cutting off of the sacrifice and oblation, and the thing about it is, is that if they put that king on the throne and they are expecting him to perform the red heifer ceremony, do you realize that it is the red heifer ceremony, which they are saying can happen at Passover next year in 2024 between Passover and Shavuot, between those two dates, they think that this will be performed. Now, the thing about the Red Heifer Ceremony you have to realize is it establishes immediately the return of the sacrificial system. So, from that point on, the sacrifices would begin and the temple service would soon begin right when that is performed. So this covenant with many in blood that I'm now thinking is this Messiah anointed one that they're going to allow to perform this ceremony is going to do that as the covenant with many in blood of the red heifer that's supposed to purify the people from their sins. Okay, so I got to thinking about this and... So in regards to this king that they will appoint, you have to realize several things about the Sanhedrin and what they perform is. So let me tell you this, and I want you to hear the last sentence of this. Moses had difficulty envisioning the moon's appearance at the exact moment of its monthly rebirth. After the sunset, God showed Moses the crescent new moon of the new month of Nisan, showing him the precise dimensions of the moon at the moment of the new month that it is to be consecrated. For the generations that followed, each new month was ushered in when the two witnesses testified before the Sanhedrin, the rabbinic supreme court, that they had seen the mole, the new moon, 
In the 4th century AD, Hillel II foresaw that the Jews would no longer be able to follow a Sanhedrin-based calendar, so Hillel and his rabbinical court established the perpetual calendar which is followed today until Mashiach or the Messiah will come and reestablish the Sanhedrin. So it's the Sanhedrin that appoints the king. He can be the hereditary king or he can be voted in as their king by the Sanhedrin. So seeing this, that this calendar will change when the Messiah will come and reestablish the Sanhedrin. So if they put a king on the throne and then the king establishes, or I should say reestablishes the Sanhedrin of old and they make him their king, and this king performs the covenant in blood that starts the beginning of the temple service all over again. Because that's what the red heifer sacrifice is. They get the ashes from the red heifer mixed with the water from the pool of Siloam and they sprinkle it on the people. It supposedly makes them pure so that they can go up and perform the temple service on holy Mount Moriah and build the temple. Now I don't want to get off track here but I want to tell you that you have to realize the connection between who they appoint the anointed one as king and this reestablishment of the Sanhedrin legally and these two things coincide and so does the red heifer sacrifice. In talking about prophetic events that have transpired, of course we know the establishment of the state of Israel had to happen, Jerusalem had to be recaptured, Jerusalem had to be declared to be the eternal capital of Israel. Then what happens? The throne of David reestablished with a king, an earthly king sitting on that throne. The time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years, that covenant with many with the blood sacrifice of the red heifer would be the start of the seven year time of Jacob's trouble because they've taken a king from the earth that's not God in the flesh coming down and they've reestablished the throne of David, reestablished monarchy. And when this king is on the throne he puts the Sanhedrin, reestablishes it, and puts it in place. All of this coincides. Do you see that it's going in order, though? And that the next things to happen are the um, king being reestablished on the throne, the Sanhedrin being officially reestablished by that king, the red heifer sacrifice, which purifies the people in the Judaism's eyes, the ultra-Orthodox eyes, to allow them to start performing the temple service. The biggest sign we have right now that the rapture is near is actually the red heifer sacrifice that they are saying in Israel could happen at Passover of 2024 to Shavuot of 2024. So Passover happens at the end of April next year. It's at the beginning of April this year. I also want to mention something I'm going to be talking about in the next video, but that that is that that great solar eclipse is going to come April 8th of 2024. So that would be just prior a few weeks to Passover next year which could signal this solar eclipse could signal the time of that red heifer sacrifice coming it could be a sign now I'm going to be talking about that in my next video but it's very complicated and I'm just kind of 
like the Lord shows me stuff and I'm just kind of like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, I'm trying to piece that together to put it together for you. And this is incredible because the Messiah will come and reestablish the Sanhedrin. Also, that's when the calendar will change according to the Hillel calendar and his rabbinical court who had established the perpetual calendar. So the times and laws are changed at the time of this reestablishment of the Sanhedrin. And who is in the Sanhedrin? I believe it's these ultra-Orthodox members that are in the Knesset that are trying to pass all of these draconian laws. And they will be passed at the time of Jacob's trouble. And the king himself may be the one to implement his laws and establish what he wants. And it could very well be adopting these ultra-Orthodox viewpoints. But what I'm going to show you that Jesus' words are coming alive is going to raise the hair on your arms and give you the chills. It is so stunning what the Lord just showed me about this. The word Sanhedrin means rabbinical supreme court. The ultra-Orthodox want to be the global world supreme court, as I've mentioned so many times. But that's the meaning of the Sanhedrin, to be the rabbinical supreme court. And so these ultra-Orthodox, with these draconian laws, are going to be having these bills passed in the future. But we will be gone by then. Now, people wonder, when's the rapture going to happen? When's the rapture going to happen? My friends, think about it. If this Messiah that they appoint is already going to be on the throne, by the time of the performance, the ceremony of the red heifer sacrifice, which could happen within a year, or just over a year, um, in 2024, and it would be the end of April, I believe around April 22nd, you know, in that week is Passover week, any time to the Shavuot. And what I wanted to say about that is that all of this is coinciding with the reestablishment of the rabbinical Supreme Court. And if the members of the United Torah Judaism sect, the Haredi sect, the ones that are persecuting the women at the Western Wall with reading a Torah scroll and everything I told you before. And uh, they, they call the Reformed Jews dogs, for example. And they've just done lots of things that are very evil. And the worst of all is denying that Jesus is their Messiah, their King. It's interesting that they also have their hand in determining who can marry and who can't marry within the Jewish um, nation. They do not permit certain Jews to marry certain people. So they have their hand in all kinds of things that are draconian laws. Um, they're not being established now. But when we take a look at when the rapture could happen, you've got to know that the rapture has to happen before the red heifer sacrifice starts the temple sacrificial system up again. Because this will be the end of the church age when that temple is established and they start performing the sacrifice and officially the sacrificial system begins at the sacrifice of the red heifer. But now I'm going to show you what just blew me away. And this is the Holy Spirit moving before your eyes. So let me just state that next year, next year, Passover begins the evening of Monday, April 22nd, 2024, to the evening of Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. Rabbis working with the red heifers told CBN News recently that they believe that they will have the red heifer ready to sacrifice by Passover of 2024. 
This would reestablish immediately the sacrificial system. That means that we have to be out of here. The true believers in the living Torah that are following him going into the eternal promised land. One of the things that they are saying over there is it is time for non-Jews to embrace Zionism to fulfill its biblical vision. In Jerusalem there was a clip by the United Torah Judaism Party that aroused fierce opposition in secular political circles after it portrayed reform conversions by using dogs wearing Jewish symbols such as the kippah and the tefillin. The clip mocks the custom among some Reformed Jews of making a sort of bark mitzvah for their dogs. And it says that if courts will decide who is Jewish, dogs will also be accepted. So, Israeli Supreme Court decision to recognize Reform and conservative conversions for the purpose of granting Israeli citizenship under the law of return. And that's when this clip was shown. And you should know also that Meretz M.K. Yair Golan wrote that according to the United Torah Judaism's propaganda, reformed Jews are simply dogs, and whoever underwent a reform conversion, if that isn't an anti-Semitic caricature, then what is? How can you dare say that 70% of American Jews are not Jewish? Where is the communal responsibility? Where are the 70 expressions of the Torah, and where is the concern for converts? And this Jew said, today I feel a deep shame for my people. So of course this was insulting to the Reform and conservative Jews, and they see them in a much lower light than they see themselves. Now another thing, you know, it was this ultra-Orthodox Rabbi Moshe Gaffney who was responsible for, you know, trying to remove the gospel of Jesus Christ and all through Israel. He wants this bill passed. And, of course, Benjamin Netanyahu said he was not going to allow that to happen. But if they move him out of the way and they put themselves or a king in his place, it could easily be passed. But thanks to the efforts of M.K. Rabbi Moshe Gaffney, United Torah Judaism, and Rabbi Yinon Azulai Shaz Party, the Knesset Finance Committee temporarily rejected an appeal by the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses cult to receive tax-exempt status. Okay, so anyway, they don't want these missionaries to receive tax-exempt status on the grounds that they had agreed to stop preaching to minors. And this is one of the things they want to do is to put so-called Christians, of course I don't see them, at, I see them as a cult, but this is one of the things that they want to stop the gospel message from coming there. And they want to imprison the people that try to do it, especially double time in jail for if you witness to a minor. These are the same people that want women to not be driving cars anymore. They don't want them to have the Torah scroll at the western wall where the women pray. They don't want them to have equal footing to pray at the western wall. They don't want them to blow a shofar, sing music, or rejoice before the Lord. They don't want them to have phylacteries or a prayer shawl. And these bills are horrible. The, it was the Reformed Jewish rabbis that came from America that gave the women at the Western Wall a Torah scroll, which they lifted up and they were rejoicing over. And as I told you, I realized that this is why the two witnesses are going to be killed there in Jerusalem, is because they are preaching the eternal gospel message of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth, and they will be killed because of the draconian laws of this party of the United Torah Judaism that is anti-gospel, anti-Jesus, anti-Yeshua. It's anti-Christ, anti-Messiah. So they're going to establish a false Messiah that's just an earthly man. I believe 
the one that has the naval background, and I believe they're going to accept King Charles III because of all of his connections with them. But here's the thing. This is what I've been really wanting to get to, this point right here. And that is that the United Torah Judaism Party, they have a symbol of the Hebrew letter Gimel as their electoral symbol. An electoral symbol is a standardized symbol allocated to an independent candidate or political party by a country's election commission for use in election ballots. Symbols are used by parties in their campaigning and printed on ballot papers where a voter must make a mark to vote for the associated party. Did you pick up on that? Is the king's mark going to also have to do with being associated with this party with the Hebrew letter Gimel? The reason why they use these symbols, one of the purposes is to facilitate voting by illiterate people who cannot read candidates' names on the ballot papers. And it's just like the Republicans have the elephant and the Democrats have the donkey, which fits. <laughs> Now, they're known as the United Torah Judaism Party, um, the UTJ. United Torah Judaism, often referred to by its electoral symbol, Gimel, is a Haredi religious conservative political alliance in Israel. The alliance consisting of Agudat Yisrael and Digal HaTorah, was first performed in 1992 in order to maximize Ashkenazi Haredi representation in the Knesset. Now, Ashkenazis were um, the ones that came from Europe. Despite the alliance splitting in 2004 over rabbinical differences, the parties reconciled in 2006 in order to prevent vote wasting. In April of 2019, the party achieved its highest number of seats ever, receiving eight seats. So their election symbol is the Hebrew letter Gimel. Unlike similar religiously oriented parties like Shaz, the Jewish Home, Takuma, and Noam, the United Torah Judaism, or UTJ, is non-Zionist. Unlike some other Haredi, or Haredim, the party is notable for its usage of technology and electronic communication. So could this have something in the future with this party having to do with the mark of the beast of the king whose mark is his royal cipher? Which I told you came from my incredible dream but was not able to be fully interpreted until the queen died and King Charles became king. Therefore, they created his royal cipher just after the queen died within a month or so. Before the establishment of Degel Ha Torah and the formation of United Torah Judaism, the two factions were united under one united Agudat Yisrael party. But the late mentor and supreme guide of the non Hasidic group, Rabbi Elazar Shak, broke away from the Hasidic wing when he concluded that the party was not representing all Ashkenazi Haredim. At that point, he split from them and created the Degel Ha Torah party for the Lithuanian Haredi Jews, also known as Mit Nagdim by some. Now, this is important that I'm telling you this, so listen up here. He chose the name Degel Ha Torah, meaning flag of the Torah, to be a contrast to the well-known flag of Israel in its connection with the secular-dominated state of Israel, an anti-Torah entity, in his opinion. Rabbi Shach was known as an outspoken critic of the secular Israeli way of life. But the United Torah Judaism Party also had considerable influence on the Israeli Sephardi Jews Shaz Party. So you have to know that the uh, Sephardic Jews are those of Spain and sort of the uh, 
Spanish background, Portuguese, all of that, Jews that came from that area. Ashkenazi are the ones that came from Europe. In fact, the Shaz party was founded by Rabbi Schock at an earlier juncture when he was previously also frustrated with the policies of the Hasidic rabbis. So he turned to the Sephardic Jews and urged his own Ashkenazi followers at that time to vote for the new Shaz party, which they did in record numbers. Later, Shaz broke with Rabbi Schock as it adopted its own independent political stance under Rabbi Ovadiah Yosef. Yet Shaz generally goes in the same direction as it has similar values, needs, and interests within the state. Haaretz cited that some women activists have protested the fact that the UTJ, along with other Haredi parties, refuses to run female candidates for office. So this is the Antichrist movement that does not regard the desire of women. He doesn't want them to have the Torah. He doesn't want them to have political, uh, to be candidates for the political parties. The UTJ responded that they have the right to follow the Jewish laws of modesty, which separates roles of men and women and maintain that they do not deny women the right to vote for any other Knesset parties of their choice. They add that Herarity women will not vote for them if they elect women. So there were seven seats in the 25th Knesset, 2022 to the present. Yitzhak Goldnoff, Moshe Gaffney, these are the Antichrist movement. Meir Porush, Yuri Maklev, Yakov, Kessler, Yakov, Asher, and Yisrael Eichler. So they have seven seats. Interesting number, huh? Now what I'm about to tell you is going to just blow your mind, and I've been waiting to get to this point, but I had to tell you those things because that is the Antichrist spirit, the anti-gospel spirit. And this is why the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, are going to come with a testimony of Yeshua that they witnessed up there on the mountain at the transfiguration okay and they were the disciples went in to the cloud and Yeshua was transfigured before them they came to acknowledge the testimony of Jesus and his death burial and resurrection in God's holy mountain they came there to be the witnesses. They're coming back to tell of this eternal testimony. And this is the anti-Messiah, the anti-Jesus Yeshua movement that is going to kill the two witnesses. And I want you to know that their electoral symbol being the Gimel is stunning. This is Jesus' words coming alive to warn everyone. Bertrand Russell posits that the, the letter Gimel, its form is a conventionalized image of a camel. The letter may be the shape of the walking animal's head, neck, and forelegs. Barry B. Powell, a specialist in the history of writing states, it is hard to imagine how gimel equals camel can be derived from the picture of a camel. It may show his hump or his head and neck. And gimel is one of the six letters which can receive a daggish call. In its proto-Canaanite form, the letter Gimel may have been named after a weapon that was either a staff sling or a throwing stick, spear thrower, ultimately deriving from a proto-Sinaitic glyph. It's interesting that the word Gimel is related to Gamol, which means justified repayment or the giving of reward and punishment. So... Don't you think that they will implement that when they become the world supreme court and they will implement punishment for those who will not obey what they say and the non-Jews, the Talmudic 
uh, Babylonian Talmud, so-called Noahide laws. Gimel is also one of the seven letters which receive special crowns called Tegin when written in the Sefer Torah. It's interesting that as an electoral symbol of the United Torah Judaism Party, being the Gimel that represents the camel, that we have easily identifiable real-world creatures, objects, or items such as the head of an elephant in the Cambodian Democratic Party, a hand, an arrow for other countries, a sailboat. Numbers such as the two-digit electoral numbers in Brazil can easily be recognized by illiterate voters. A letter or small group of letters, one, two, or three, or four Hebrew letters and additional symbols can be used. My question is, will the mark contain one of these electoral parties' marks so that the people will have to follow the king's mark and have that sealed on them in their hand or forehead and able to do certain things? And, of course, the king's image is on the money. So all of this being the mark of the beast, and a beast is a king, so it's the mark of a king. Um, but just listen to this. Now listen, because this is like Jesus' words coming true. In Gematria, Gimel represents the number three. It's written like a Vav and a Yud as a foot, and is traditionally believed to resemble a person in motion. Symbolically, a rich man running after a poor man to give him charity. In the Hebrew alphabet, Gimel directly precedes Dalit, which signifies a poor or lowly man from the Hebrew word Dal. And I just told you that the word Gimel is related to Gimel, which means justified repayment or the giving of reward and punishment. So I want to reread that again. Gimel represents the number three written like Vav and Yud as a foot and is traditionally believed to resemble a person in motion, symbolically a rich man running after a poor man to give him charity. The letter Gimel is the electoral symbol for the United Torah Judaism's party, and the party is often nicknamed Gimel. So Jesus' words are about to come alive for the Antichrist movement of the United Torah Judaism Party. Jesus said these words and they're about to come alive before you. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew 23, verse 23. Jesus said when he was in the temple, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint, anise, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone, blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel, that's Gimel, that's their symbol, the Antichrist movement's electoral symbol, the camel, 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. The blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Gimel, the electoral symbol of the Antichrist party in Israel, right now, is the camel. Mark 10, 23. Then Jesus, Yeshua, looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying amongst themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. The Gimel, representing the United Torah Judaism Party, represents the rich man running after the poor man to give him charity. They represent the rich man in this parable, and they represent the camel. Then Simon Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. And then he predicted his death, burial, and resurrection. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. So this Antichrist party that has the electoral symbol of the Gimel that equals the camel is coming alive in Jesus' words that they are the Antichrist that are going to fight against Jesus when he comes. They are going to kill the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, right there. The ones that were witnesses of Jesus' testimony when they came to the mountain, when the three disciples were set apart as Kadesh, and the Lord revealed himself to them in glory. And... Jesus is telling them that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And the gimel represents the camel, and it represents the rich man who cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whew. Jesus' words just came alive for today, for the Antichrist movement that is there in Jerusalem right now, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the scarlet harlot, the, the ancient monarchy, and the people that committed harlotry against God himself. And this is why Jesus had the harlot brought before him, and he did not condemn her. He just wants their love, and he wants them to acknowledge their king and to turn to him. And you've got this anti-Christ, anti-gospel, anti-good news party in Jerusalem right now, in Mystery Babylon the Great. 
that is setting up an earthly king that's going to appoint and reestablish um, legally the world supreme court as the Sanhedrin. And these members of the United Torah Judaism Party are members of that Sanhedrin. So the king and the Sanhedrin are working in cahoots. This could be why they actually said that they've already been meeting with the so-called Messiah. They're going to pick the one that's anointed with the holy oil during his coronation ceremony. And the biggest sign that the rapture is near is going to be the red heifer sacrifice that that Messiah performs. Because that starts the whole cycle of the temple service, of the sacrificial system all over again. Now you may be telling me, okay, well they've already sacrificed lambs at Passover, etc. Those were like dress rehearsals. The actual temple service is not yet started or begun, and that will happen at the sacrifice of the red heifer. So you've got the Antichrist party, and Jesus said that it was easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And their symbol represents both the camel and the rich man. I'm telling you, I had the chills this morning when the Lord was revealing this whole thing. So this is just a testimony by the Holy Spirit this morning telling you that the biggest sign is that we are going to be raptured very soon is that the red heifer sacrifice could happen as soon as Passover of next year. And if they push it sooner, then we would be out of here sooner. God's going to deal with his people. And that setup of the seven-year time of Jacob's trouble, I believe that that covenant with many is that blood covenant of that red heifer sacrifice. It may also include the land lease and uh, that I spoke about before and allowing the Jews to build the temple. It starts with the purification of the people to allow them to start the temple service, which allows them to start building the temple, which signifies how close we are to the end. When people are speculating about the rapture and how soon it will be, it has to happen like before that sacrifice happens because that reestablishes not only the Davidic dynasty, that earthly king on the throne, it reestablishes him sacrificing the red heifer to purify the people, to restart the temple sacrifices and the temple service, which constitutes the rebuilding of the temple and all of its lining up like ducks in a row. And then you know what? We have that to look at as a time frame of when we're going to be out of here with being raptured up to be with our king that we've already accepted and these people are also trying to control the marriages like I said some of the Jews actually leave Israel to go get married in another foreign country because they're not allowed to marry the person that they want to marry in Israel so they're very controlling and this is the Antichrist beast system. It's the system of a king, and they are going to be part of the end time king's system of his kingdom. The mark of the king is going to come out of there, and the gimel represents the camel from Jesus' own words from 2,000 years ago, and it's happening again. The camel and the rich man. unbelievable. So I hope I explained everything I wanted to say. Um, incredible. This is a warning from the Lord. Jesus is coming and it's going to be soon. And we need to pay attention to the King, the United Torah Judaism Party and their movements. And we need to pay attention to those Sanhedrin members. They want to be the world supreme court. 
unbelievable. I had the chills when the Lord showed this to me this morning. I tried to piece it together and I hope that it just opens people's eyes. Wow. I'll see you in the next video.